Hi, I'm Daryl Crow. It's Monday morning and it's time for another one of our wiggly tips on painting about how you can help put contact paper onto your canvas. Let's head on down to the palette so I can show you this easy little trick. A lot of times I like to take some models and uh, take a photo of them and use them in a painting. But every once in a while, you know, it's fairly easy to cut out on a contact paper if you want to protect the area on your, uh, on your uh, canvas, as we did in, say, there was uh, a painting we did called Two Sisters and another painting called Beach Walk. And this is the technique that I used. I just went ahead and copied the outside uh, figures onto contact paper, cut the contact paper out, and then uh, affix it to my canvas. But once in a while, you see right here in the center, we've got uh, an area that we have to cut. Otherwise, we're going to have to paint, and it won't make any sense. And I'd rather just cut it out, and as we paint, go ahead and cover that area. So in order to do that, I need something to do the cutting up on. So what I've done is I've taken a number of old file folders, and that's what I will use. So the first thing I do, there's about a half a dozen here, is I take a rubber band, put it around one edge, the second edge, and I'm ready to go. You could actually cut the whole figurine out here if you'd like. That would be uh, strictly up to you. But I was only concerned about the uh, uh, space in between his legs, okay? Right in here, you'll see he's got a right leg, left leg, and as he's walking, there's a little bit of an open gap right there. So this is where an X-Acto knife is uh, unbelievable. Now, if you're fortunate that your craft shop has a little pad for doing this, and sometimes many of them do with a rubber mat, you could use that. But if you like to save a little money, and uh, you have some old filing cabinet uh, file folders, or you have uh, you know cardboard like this, you can go ahead. And I like this thickness of the file folders because it doesn't cut all the way through. So I can use this a lot. Then once it's raggedy, flip it over, and, uh, and then if that becomes too raggedy, both sides, I can just throw it away. Okay, so. There we are, we've got the space, I just have to pull it out, but if you have to recut it, go ahead. Sometimes I don't want to press too hard, and I end up not going all the way through. So if you find yourself doing that, don't rip it, just come back and cut it again. If you rip it, you're going to get a gap that really wasn't what you wanted. Okay, there we are. See how easy that was to cut? And now we have the right proportions and everything on this space. And so all we have to do now is peel the paper off and we can affix this right onto the canvas. This is what drives me mad. I spend all that time doing a drawing. I spend all that time cutting out that little silly contact paper that's supposed to stick and I put the little man's head and it pops right back up. Well, there's a three things we can do. One, we can give up, but I don't like doing that. See, there comes that head. He's laughing. He said, you thought you had me nailed down there. But you know something? We can use white paint right over this area and position uh, the uh, contact paper over it, and it'll set right in there. And it'll still pull off, amazingly enough. But you've got to be careful where you spray, because if you spray in, in your home, uh, you better be well ventilated. If you're going to be spraying outside, you better make sure your outside is ventilated as well. Okay, you can also use different colors than white, maybe clear. I happen to have some clear here, and no, this is not that well ventilated of an area, so we will not use it. The other thing I've come across is something here called repositional adhesive. A lot of graphic artists use this, and, and simply all you do is you turn the guy over to the sticky side, all right, just like this, and spray it. 
and you want to hold it back about 10 or 12 inches or you can spray the surface that you're going to position them on and I like that idea best. So we'll just hold this back about 8-9 inches and spray right there on the area where you'd like to put the uh, contact paper. Now once that's sprayed down, you don't have to rush, but you have to be quick. Alright, let's put our guy down. Right here on the beach is where he goes. Now the reason I like repositionable is that by the time I'm ready to paint, and the, these two figures, all I have to do is take an X-Acto knife, lift up an edge, and there he is, our little guy is. His. And all you have to do is make sure you get all the air out. Okay. Just like that. And if there's any spot giving you trouble, just stand back eight, nine inches. Make sure you're given another quick spray. This even works on uh, ovals when you're trying to take contact paper on an oval. Works great that way. Okay, well, this has been another tip to you from Daryl Crow Studios. If you're working on a painting and you're stuck, you got a question, send us an email to daryl at darylcrow.com. And we'll be happy to answer it. And we'll even send you a free gift. You go to darylcrow.com slash videos and you'll find out that we offer a free 60-day lesson on how to paint covering just about everything we do. If you're interested in acrylics, you can also visit our website at youcanpaintacrylics.com. I'm Daryl Crow and this is Joe Kuzin. And together, we know that each and every one of you as long as you got to want to, you can learn to paint.